So I just logged into your Paramount the other day. I was able to just log into it without even... I, I just know your password and stuff now. <laughs> you're going to say... Okay, <laughs> like you're not going to say it, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, yeah. All right, and here is Tommy's password, everybody. No. <laughs> what, are you, what kind of a monster do you think I am? Yeah, what are you watching on it? Uh, What did I... What? Oh, I was trying to watch the 49ers football game, and it was promoted that it would be on Paramount+, Plus, but... I'm not in the market of San Francisco, the Bay Area, so it didn't let me fucking watch it. And I was pissed. Oh, interesting. And it's actually a thing that uh, my that Josh and I, we, we were talking about this. We both, like, all we really want to do is watch the 49ers every fucking week. And we can't because we're not in the San Francisco market. And there's only one service where you can, like, pay to, like, watch whatever team you want to watch. And it's, like, $300 a fucking year. Between the two of you, it's 150. <laughs> no. I mean, they're, apparently the NFL is talking about trying to find a, a ser- like doing their own private service of letting you pay for whatever team you want to watch. I mean, I'd pay. It's I, weird to me they don't already do that. I know, right? I, I would pay like $10 a month for football. For four games a month. Yeah, only four footballs. I mean, I, 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 I added the red zone to my sling. <laughs> Excuse me just for the football season, and I'm going to take it off once uh, the playoffs start because I don't need it anymore. Cool. Yeah, you care nothing about I don't care. <laughs> this is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and, and Jacob's big tape. Wholly uninterested. <laughs> Say hello, Mr. Big. Turn around. And yeah, that was actually kind of cute. Yeah, he, okay. his, 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 his tail started wagging. Hey, we have a dog in the studio today. Let's see if he... And we. So you might hear some like jangles, some... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. Take his, a, his mom's out of town, so I thought, don't leave him home alone. Come here. Even though he's home alone all the fucking time. No, that's why we don't. What? What? <laughs> that's why we don't when we don't have to. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, hi. Hey, how's everybody doing out there? How's it going, everyone? Happy New Year. Welcome to the New Year. Oh yeah, happy new year. <laughs> I always forget it's like off. We're like a, yeah, yeah. a couple of weeks. We're like, yeah. Um so uh yeah, we uh we're doing a review. We're doing a t- kind of t- fantasy duo for the next uh, weeks or two weeks or whatever. Well, yeah, we're doing a fantasy movie, then we're doing our new year and then another fantasy. That's how we planned it out. I mean, if you want to let them know that we're recording our New Year banter after this episode, sure. <laughs> if you want to strip away the illusion. <laughs> I literally just did. I, just... I know. I'm just like, fine. Let them know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we decided to go kind of like back into the... Oh, shit. What? Oh, you didn't hear your notes? Yeah, I didn't bring those up. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going back. We wanted to go back into the 80s fantasy realm. So we are doing... We've been kind of in the 90s, 2000s for a minute. Yeah. So. so we decided we're doing uh, the never ending story. Never ending story. There it is. I got to the page. Oh. Um, released April 6th in Germany and July 20th in the US in 1984. Yeah, okay. Very German film. A, v- a lot of German good. filmmaker. Didn't realize this was very German. German, German. I didn't German. realize it was a book. Didn't re- yeah, German book. It's a German book and a German director, and it was shot in mainly Germany. Yeah. With a lot of German like, people working on it. it was, I didn't know anyone then. <laughs> no, dude. This, it, this was kind of interesting to do research. I was like, all right. That's, I guess, cool. Um, so uh, rating-wise, though, it's got a 7.4 on IMDb, um, 80% tomato meter, and then 81% um, audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and what, strangely, 46% Metacritic. This is kind of yeah. a, is really that's really weird. Yeah, and with the critics' reviews, there were six positive, one mixed, and three negative. Yeah, um, and at the box office wise in uh, eighty four, we just did Gremlins eighty four. Um, yeah, this was uh, n- uh, number fifty four. Um, <laughs> I I so I've had the same format this entire time, but yeah. this one I decided to try and do it in the order that we talk it to. So I'm losing. Mm. Oh, they're, they're in the, the stuff's in different spots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Number 54. Uh, yeah, we did it just recently, but top five, uh, Beverly Hills Cops, Ghostbusters, uh, Temple of Doom, Gremlins and Karate Kid. Yeah. Actually, I don't think we actually talked, said what, what, what the top five were when we did Gremlins. I think we forgot to do that. 
I, yeah, I think maybe we did because we were surprised that it was actually in the top five. I think it was one of the first times that, or one of the few times that this actually happened. Um, the, yeah, and uh, budget for uh, 1984, uh, $27 million, And uh, there's a, another podcast uh, that uh, a pair, Tommy and Shannon, uh, that we listened to. What was it called again? Seriously? Yeah, you, I know. And I just forgot it. <laughs> no, it's a rewatch, uh, relive, relive. Uh, yeah. Rewatch, relive, repeat. Yeah, yeah. The, it's R three. I know it as R three. Yeah, that's what I know it as. That's why I get confused. <laughs> uh, but they're another podcast uh, that do movies. But they actually, uh, Shannon, I was listening to their. They did a Beetlejuice episode, and she was actually mm-hmm. started doing um, inflation, which was kind of interesting. So I kind of stole it. I was like, that's a cool, cool idea. Uh, so in eighty four is twenty seven million, which in two thousand one is sixty one million. Wow. Okay. Which is, it was like, oh, that's really interesting. And then it grossed uh, an eighty four hundred million, which would come to roughly two hundred sixty seven million today. Okay. So it. Did pretty good, yeah, for its time, yeah, yeah. Like actually, even then, just making a hundred million off a twenty twenty seven million yeah. budget. And yeah. I, I think this movie kind of became more of like a. I mean, this is definitely a children's family style movie, um, and I think it was it's become more of like an underground cult classic. Yeah, I could see that because I don't know. There, it's like I, I'm starting to wonder how many people really know about this movie. I mean, it's not very good. It's not horrible no i don't know i didn't but it's also i didn't really remember it <laughs> um, i go ahead I, I i actually it was the end of it i didn't remember all the way up to um more or less like the sphinx i i remember everything up to that point as a kid the I, stripper sphinx yeah right the titty like, sphinx got some big boobies <laughs> the titty sphinx um yeah, let's let's go into uh, let, 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 we'll 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 go into that let's talk about um director and all that all that all that jazz so, so if people don't know synopsis first no. oh yeah that's right your synopsis i didn't write one today oh i'm really off of it uh so let's see um off the, off the cuff uh young boy discovers magical book that takes him on a never ending story oh. i wonder if people know the song more than they do the movie <laughs> I feel like there's probably a pop of people that are aware of it now because of Stranger Things season three. What does that have to do with anything? Because Dustin sings it to his like girlfriend and like over the summer, like they went and saw the movie. Like everybody's talking about the movie. I clearly don't remember season three. It's not one of the better ones, but mm. okay. Definitely got to rewatch that before season four. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so it was directed by Wolfgang Peterson. Who, I'm surprised I've seen a handful of his movies. Apparently, Just didn't know who he was. Yeah, um, he's known directing for uh, Enemy Mine, um, Outbreak, Air Force One, and Troy. I just wrote down the movies that I have seen. Uh, <coughs> Which is where Enemy Mine came up again. And Air Force One. Have we talked about it? That's mm-hmm. our, okay. Um, I just remember you going, get off my plane. (laughs) Some like we clearly talked about it. Um, Perfect Storm and Poseidon. Uh, Wolfgang Peterson is kind of an interesting director in the sense that his his fingerprint, his thumbprint on everything is he's really good at action disaster movies. Where it's something terrible is happening and... Like Perfect Storm or mm-hmm. Poseidon is basically yeah. like a modern take of Titanic, kind of like sure. Well, it's a big sci, a big sci-fi boat that's sinking. Yeah, I get yeah. Explain a movie badly. What's Titanic about? A big boat that sinks. <laughs> like, <laughs> what about the love story? Uh, anyways, Kate Winslet. Oh uh, yeah, but Wolfgang I'll never let go, Jack. is a I'll German, never let go. Is a German dir- let it go. Is a German director. <laughs> Yeah, uh, his I think most popular for uh, out of his German uh, German f- uh, films uh, would be Das Boot. I feel like I feel like I've had conversations with people about that. I haven't seen it, I but seen I've either. had uh, people have talked about it to me. I guess you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, but I yeah, just think of the the, the beer. Das, oh, it's das, the boot. Das Boot. Das Boot. Das Boot. Beer Fest. There yeah. we go. That's what it's called. Beer Fest. <laughs> Um, and he's also the, he was also the, um, screenplay, one of the screenplay writers for this movie. Um, and next to him helping with screenplay was, uh, Herman Weigel or Weigel, Weigel. Who's a primarily a German screenplay writer. And, no. and producer. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, literally just like, when I looked him up on wiki, it's just like a German screenwriter and producer. And that well, was pretty much it. When I, I, like, looked, oh. I looked at his credits and I was like, I don't know how to say any, any of, of these words. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting. is like ger, ger, German is pretty phonetic. In a, in its in a, in a big sense, there's just like 
uh, it's just they're in weird orders because the English language is based off of you know ger- German. It's Germanic. Just uh, sorry, I'm just you're trying to find a word and then it'd be like how oh, to pronounce it. Siegfried. <laughs> Siegfried I said that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the look on his face right now. All right, let's move forward. The Klenin uh, Soldat. That's probably not. That's, that's probably real bad. Actually, that could be. That sounded kind of close. <laughs> Tommy Kurhert Zurich. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> um, anywho, uh, this is also say, as we said, this is based off of a novel um, written by uh, Michael Andy. Andy, yeah. And yeah, Andy. Um. And he's he's a very popular just German novelist. I don't know. I'm like looking through stuff. I couldn't see much that was like this was translated it into uh, uh, into into American into English. <laughs> um, but I couldn't. I didn't see anything any like famous like this was possibly his most famous. Oh, and Momo. Oh yeah, Momo. Not the uh, internet meme, <laughs> but an '80s movie that looks like the German Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah. What are um, you looking at? <coughs> I was just looking. <coughs> Michael. God, what's happening? Michael Andy. Um. Yeah. Uh, the original book uh, was published in 1979. Yes. Um. And he more or less hated the movie. Yeah. So I mean, he originally like helped like make the screenplay for it, and it was you know it it it, it had more of the the book that he wrote. This the so. This book or this movie only tells like half of the story. Of the yeah, ne- which is weird. And the Neverending Story two kind of finishes it loosely. Yeah, like certain plot points, but not yeah. entirely. I was reading. So apparently, he the way that he wrote the book is that you finish the last page and you could just start reading from the first page again, and it loops. It's an infinite loop of a book. Like it comes, the story completes, but it like starts again, which. I found very interesting. We should get our hands on a copy of this. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. Um, well, because also I was reading that um, a big thing was about that is that yeah, they kind of wrote it together and he was all gung ho about it. But then Wolfgang started changing things unbeknownst, so he didn't even yeah. know. To him, the finished product he was kind of like was like swept. Yeah, like but the the rug pulled from underneath him. He's like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. isn't anything that I wrote. Like, yeah. what the fuck. I mean, and Wolf, I've, I found a couple of things with Wolfgang Peterson and how, like, he's like, there was just, like, there was too many characters. It was too massive of a world for me to, like, really fit into, like, what this, like, what could be a, uh, you know, coherent story mm-hmm. for him to tell. And especially in the 80s, you know? Yeah. I bet now with, like, special, like, the, with more special effects that you can, like, lean into. Well, and also this movie's only an hour and a half. Yeah, it is. And a lot of it is just kind of very much, like, artsy, like, faraway shots of like the nothing coming within clouds yeah and, you know and falcor flying bastion or fucking a tray you around yeah um like so i don't know but i remember I, I mean this was one of one of my favorite uh movies as a kid all right but i just now watch i've never had i haven't watched it since i was like even like maybe a teenager or I, adult. Can't, I can't remember the last time i saw this movie um but i did want uh, so i looked up um uh puppeteering for this because that was kind of like i I was kind of i was i was surprised it was hard for me to find anything because there's no actual like it didn't say like who like the actual like the team or anything but one little article on the huff post like that talks it's like um peterson talking about um like he was like uh with the design process split amongst italian artist old del rico and a production designer called Rolf uh, Zettenbauer. And then there's Caprice Roth, who was the professional mime controlling E.T. Mm, okay. So she, Caprice Roth kind of like helped like with all the puppeteering and like the, the specific movements of them talking and all that stuff. And then you had Old Del Rico, who uh, was creating like the design for all of like the puppets and like the characters and what have you. And then Rolf, uh, Rolf uh, Zettenbauer was the guy who created like the the scenic design oh, okay and the world around them so and it was just kind of like i was trying to find stuff that the else that they had done and i mean yeah there's a list of stuff like on imdb but they're just it's all fucking foreign <laughs> 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 it's like this movie strangely exists in a pocket of of american <laughs> cinema that i don't think you know it's like we i feel like we did another movie kind of like this 
five? Fifth element. Fifth element. That's right. Because, yeah, it was very <clears throat> French, French influence. It felt very not American. Yeah. Fantasy. And even just like, the, like the whole, like the message of this movie and the, like the story of it is kind of like, it's not a very American fairy tale. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they look like the nothing wins in a big way. Like yeah. actually does win. Yeah. You know? And like it's, yeah, it's kind of sad. It's depressing, but it's also, it's about overcoming that depression too, you know? It just makes me think of Zelda and Link and that whole I thing. I can kind of see that. Yeah. Only except for our tax. Fuck, oh, God damn, that damn horse. That's like the only thing I remembered. Is the horse sinking yeah, in the, which was, the swamp I, of Yeah, which made sense because I was like, this is horrible. <laughs> Traumatic memory of deep seated in there, you know. Yeah, I the the rock eater or the rock. Biter, I remember him. Yeah, the rock biter always sticks out to me because I also he's he was my favorite character when I was a kid. Um, and then I also remember him having a, a the kid and a wife in the second one. It was like Rock Biter Junior. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and mm-hmm. I have a fever dream memory of the HBO series animated show. Interesting. That I completely forgot existed until I saw like a clip, like a, a screenshot, and I was like, "Whoa, that that happened." It was weird. I really remembered the Night Hob. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, it was like you are very familiar to me. It's, or, he also looks very much like we're, uh, the, what we'll get into next week, a character from Legend. Yeah, he looks like he's out of like a Legend, you know? Yeah. Um. It's, oh, I get what you mean now. What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing about the. The pulling the veil. I, I, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> that we're recording uh, out yeah, of yeah, order. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Oh, um, man. Um, so you want to talk about who's starring in this movie? Uh, yeah, let me. <laughs> <laughs> fucking no one? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to bring it up again just because I wrote him um, down, but I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I mean uh, maybe something will pop out to me this Barrett time. Barrett Oliver was like a child actor in the 80s. And I recognize him. The only thing I've ever seen him in was Cocoon. Yeah. yeah. Um, where is he at? Oh, my thing. And this is something, if someone knows, like, actually, like, more about, like, German cinema and stuff, I want to know if some of these people are actually way more famous than we're giving them credit for, and um, we just have no reference point for but it. But all of these actors are American actors. Are they all? As far as I could, as far as I noticed, yeah. Like... It was like all of the like the, the like, I think like I actually strangely the most popular person in this movie probably is Deep Roy, probably. But yeah, so Barrett Oliver plays Bastion, the young boy that finds the book that is reading the the never ending story, mm-hmm. and then we had and yeah, he's in Cocoon and Frankenweenie in like the eighties and like the TV, my made for TV Secret Garden movie. That's pretty much all I yeah, like I don't. F- very, I don't very remember Cocoon very well, so I can't tell you. Cocoon would be fun to review. That would be, yeah. Um, Noah Hathaway plays the, the the warrior that's gonna save the day. Who has who's in Troll, which I thought was fucking hilarious as Harry Potter Junior. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. And then I guess the third most is Tammy Stronark, who Stronic. is Stronic, who is the Empress of the. What is it called? Fantasia. Yeah, she's yeah, she's the childlike empress of yeah of. And of, she's more or was more of a Broadway. Oh, is that you got that? Yeah. Okay, that makes well, sense. Well, because even her, I think it was like this is going to be totally misquoted. I'm sorry, but a teacher of hers, whether it be like a dance teacher or a stage teacher, mm-hmm. kind of tricked her into doing it in this movie because she thought it was going to be a play. Oh, it wasn't until that she got the part that there was an actually she realized it was a full length movie. Oh, interesting. And, but she's only in the very end of it. Yeah, but I just think she's you know, she's the third most talked about person. Yeah. You, you know, like... I mean, it, it's interesting because, yeah, I would say, like, Deep Roy is... Who's... Has probably gotten the, the biggest career. How'd you like that he was dressed up like Willy Wonka? I mean, I, oh, I didn't even put that together, but... <laughs> like the Gene Wilder, Willy yeah. Wonka. Well, I mean, there's a specific type of character that... That... I forget what they're called, but... That's a, that's a very that's a type of style for something like it's like a Mad Hatter style thing. Oh, and then I was gonna break up, and he's in and he or dressed up like the Mad Hatter. Yeah, um, and Deep Roy. I mean, he's most popular really for. Uh, I mean, he's uh, Tim Burton he's stuff. A, yeah, he he's a little person. Um, he's like four foot four. But I've never actually heard he, him talk. This is the first time I ever heard him. 
Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah, like actually speak. Because he's really quiet. Well, because he talks in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but they do like an effect on they, his yeah, voice. Yeah, they have the effect on his because voice. Because there's different voices. For, I and, never just well, heard him I think it's actually, I think those are actually Danny Elfman's voice. voice. That's Danny Elfman's voice changed. Oh, up. that he's just like sinking to? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because he plays all the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Um, and then he's in an episode of X-Files and... Yeah, he's got a lot of little bit parts around around Hollywood. You'd see him. It's one of those like if you don't know what we're talking about, if you watch this, you'll look at him and be like, "Oh, yeah, that him. guy, that guy, I know that I guy, know that guy." Um, and then I uh, also I want to call out um the voice actor of uh of uh um oh god, why am I forgetting the dra- what's the Luck Dragon's name? Far F- Farquat. No, that's <laughs> yeah. No, I wanted to say Farquat. Uh oh, why? Oh, it's Fokker. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Parkour! Parkour! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Parkour! We're, we're failing so hard. And now I can't fucking see it anywhere. Oh, why is this so... He's got such a long... Li- he's a voice actor. I Did I say his name? No. <laughs> we are so fucking on it today, man. Uh, hold on a second. I just want to get... You know if you stop talking, we could cut all this out. So Falcor! They- Falcor! Stop talking, we could cut it and Rockbiter, he does the voice for all of them. His name is Alan um, Oppenheimer. Uh, and... I think that I... Uh, he's suddenly... Oh, yeah, he was the voice of Skeletor and He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. He did a lot of uh, 80s, like, voices. Like, he did some... I think I saw Transformers in here as well. Snorks, Scooby-Doo... Um, oh, he's a, like an old school mm-hmm. voice actor. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Um, I was born in 1930. The Smurfs, DuckTales, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Oh, he, he was in Nine. Yep. Fallout 4. Yep. He's just uh, in oh, he's, one of, the, he's he, one of the paladins. That's cool. Um, yeah. So, I mean... It's, it's, it's really, so weird to look at this. I have heard his voice for a very for long time. Yeah, right? Yeah, he plays Prometheus and God of War. What? That's cool. <laughs> I didn't even. Th- I don't know why I didn't even think to look up the, look voice, up the actor voice actor of Valcor. Yeah, I forget how I came up for me to be research. I think it was just because there was such a lack of people to st- of people to like look up stars. Like this has nobody really in it. Interesting. I think, it's just- I think that's also kind of what makes this movie like. Um stand out on its in a way as well is that it's very artistic very very artistic for the 80s it's very uh, visually captivating well i mean that's why we kind of paired these together yeah in a way is because they're very much like almost like yeah it's not even the story that you care about it's what they did visually mm-hmm. a lot of the time you know i mean i think the only like thing about this is that they really pushed like special effects camera tricks too hard for what was capable to be done successfully like green screen and imposing images on stuff it just, i feel like they did a very very good job for 84 really well I, th- I think it's fine but it's like if they had just leaned back a little bit on I mean, that it looks it, better than half the shit that happened in willow there's the only one in three, willow yeah the three-headed dragon one is the only time they do that otherwise it's all no there's also the weird like the shit coming alive and the with with the witch fight at the end of it the shit coming alive yeah. with the witch fight <laughs> god damn it do you, do you, what, oh the, yeah the, the the oh my god i so wish we were uh, the what, inanimate what? objects coming oh up. yeah the, the 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 gandalf saruman fight but with the two witches yeah <laughs> never but did, i wonder if i mentioned that in that recording i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but even then so there's those two there's those two yeah, those stick out like a fucking sore thumb. Yeah, but this entire Hardcore. this entire movie is imposed CG. I wonder if maybe because I watched it on my 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 bedroom television, I didn't really it didn't have it, I didn't see as many like like uh, oh you flaws. didn't you didn't see it like as like glaring. Yeah, possibly. I yeah, wonder I mean, because yeah. that's like an old 1080p television. Oh, and, maybe. And my television living room's an OLED like yeah, and then I have super a four, high definition. Then I have like a 4K HD that I watched. Yeah, and yours is more yeah super high more high definition yeah. than but yeah interesting. Yeah, because it really it really stood out to me, like really bad. I wonder if maybe it also stood out to you because you're not, you don't, you you didn't really grow up watching as much of stuff like that than I did. Maybe no, I did, hundred percent. I grew up watching. Like I, like, this yeah. is my mom's. Like I know, I yeah, bag, no, but like I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I just like 
I feel like, well, I have more years of seeing them. Like that was like the shit for me for a minute. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like as you were getting into movies, that was already not the shit. There was new shit. Does that make sense? Yeah. The shit. Do you get the shit that I'm shitting? Yeah. Shitting oh, you? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, there's not really like a whole lot to... Oh, man, what'd you get for reviews? Let's go okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so starting off with positive, uh, we got our boy Roger Ebert at uh, Chicago Sun-Times. The idea of the story within a story is one of the nice touches in the never-ending story. Another one is the idea of a child's faith being able to change the course of fate. Maybe not since the kids in the audience were asked to save Tinkerbell and Peter Pan has the outcome of a story been left so clearly up to a child's willingness to believe. Yeah. I was like, I picked that specifically because I liked the correlation between Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell and yeah. I was like, that's an interesting like take on that. Yeah. Because, you know, you're supposed, you got to clap, you got to clap the saber, you know, kind of thing. It was interesting. Believe. Um, mixed, uh, Ian Nathan at Empire. This was sweet and charming at the time, but now it just lacks either the comedy or sophistication of kids fantasy film that we've become accustomed to. I really agree with that so one. So the positive one and the negative one were both written around the time of release. The mm -hmm. mixed one was kind of a reviewing. Yeah. Um, and then who did I pick? Oh, uh, Richard Corliss at Time. Um, a lot of it's really pretty. The colors and creatures and all. But these days, you know, every movie is pretty. I guess the only thing that kept me glued to my seat was the gum somebody stuck to the upholstery. <laughs> uh, written July 84. Yeah, rough. Um, and then like, um, that one's too brutal. Another kind of negative one was uh, that I thought was interesting was David K E K E H R Kerr 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 K E H R Kerr uh, Kerr at reader. Despite the, the sophistication of the source material, this 84 film isn't particularly successful. Peterson insists on forcing the superficial moral lessons and the half hour removed from the film by its American distributors leaves it with a harsh chop, <laughs> choppy rhythm. <sighs> yeah, I can kind of see that too. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It's really just how you like. Well, this movie is clearly a message about, you know, dealing with grief and loss and, you know, not letting it take. Did you, did you actually write a review? I was about to, but you I had to get back on that, dude. I, well, I I was I, I I did just kind of like slip my mind with this one because I was like I said getting really tired of just writing the same thing over and over and over again. We were doing the sports block, yeah. Um, but uh, this one, yeah, no, this movie is very much like a a story about grief and loss. Um, the very beginning, like Bash, it's clear like Bastion talks about you know his mom and how he misses her and he dreamt about her and the dad. You can tell, like, the, and the dad's not, like, he's he's not, like, a horrible dad where he's, like, he does kind of, like, brush it under the rug, like, we got to, like, move on type thing, but he's yeah. also does, like, he also then, like, sits down and is, like, I need to have a talk with you, son, about, like, your grades, and you didn't do the, sw you didn't try out for the swimming team, and you really need to stay grounded, like, can I trust you, like, you're, you're, you're growing up to be an adult, you need to get your head out of the clouds. Yeah. So, there's, like, this sense of that Bastion needs to, like, uh, you know stop being a kid and like it's like a loss of innocence type thing you know yeah and this movie is very much about the adventure for him to go on to one accept his mother's death and also be able to like find a way to still be a grounded person but keep his like fantasy his fantasia alive you know yeah i could see that Hey there, I just wrote a review. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um Yeah, I mean it's I mean, did you kind of I mean, they kind of like fucking beat it on your head with the uh, Gamork uh talking at uh Treyu and at the like the end of the fucking world type shit, you know? Oh yeah. That was so <clears throat> like like lackluster. Yeah, the, it, very anticlimactic Bring, at that even moment. Introducing that character. Yeah, introducing the Gamork to make it, it seem like it's going to be some really badass wolf that there's going to be a long drag out fight with Atreyu. It, it was the it was the pale orc from Hobbit. Yeah, it's like it was a weird thing to put in there, especially like I'm sure I don't like not reading the book. I don't know if that was in there, but it's like you could have lost that because the whole already the conflict is you're running out of time. You're fighting against the clock. You don't need to have a physical. 
like bad guy? I think that was just because it was something that was in the book that was probably better like written in the book. You know, I know but you cut out a bunch of shit already. Cut that out. You didn't need it. Yeah. <clears throat> Because also it very much like it, it, uh, it's it, like, it's an entire explanation of like, and when, you know, you let go of your hope, Fantasia is destroyed. And it's like very much like, oh yeah. So it's telling you like what the movie is about is being told to you right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I think that's my, the, the, the best, like the biggest point about it. It's like, you're already, you're battling time. It's like, even with the Hobbit putting the pale orc in there, mm-hmm. it's like, we already got a dragon we got to fight, and we already got armies coming to take... You know what I mean? There's already enough outside conflict that's already, like, a problem. <laughs> the nothing is, like, a representation of existentialism. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're literally, like, counting down the seconds until the world is over. You don't need anything else to push the story along. That's a big fucking deal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's the asteroid in Armageddon. Yeah, the, yeah, you know. And like, I just thought I thought the whole thing was weird. And I was excited for it too. It was a like, cool, a werewolf kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then it. it's very, it was very womp womp. Yeah, it's definitely. I do got to say, like, when I was a kid, this movie was a lot more exciting. And now that I'm, it's definitely a movie that hasn't aged very well. It hasn't, it hasn't aged yeah. very well. It, yeah, in today's standards uh, of fantasy, like that one that review that was saying is like. That is that was that the mixed one, where it's like in child in child oh, fantasy yeah, stories yeah. that the we have Na- today, Nathan, yeah, that are a lot more fast paced. They like children. They uh, maybe fantasy movies are just different now. Yeah, very much so. And it's like oh, and like but well, I, I feel like children can take in more information than like we like when we were younger. Maybe I don't know. Never ending story is a prime candidate for a miniseries. Yeah, and you know who would fucking be cool as fuck to direct and produce it? Del Toro. Yes, one hundred percent. I was, I was like, when the council meeting was happening, mm-hmm. I was looking at the monsters or the, 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 the creatures. The creatures. The yeah. The 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 folks of Fantasia, and I went. Mm-hmm. Del Toro would fucking rock this shit. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. And it'd be dark, and it'd be weird, and it'd, it'd be, be cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. A thousand percent, I, um, like a do, six episode. Do the entire story of do the book. Yeah, just do the book proper. Do the book proper. Mm-hmm. Six eight episodes. Call it a fucking day. Yeah, that'd be fucking right. I'm like, it's it's because it is the the source material is cool, and it'd be cool if they could actually get it to like end and have it be able to loop. That's how it, yeah. the book does as well. Yeah, dude, to make it so you could just watch it again. Dude. That'd be. I think that. Dude. It's just like Bruh. it's just kind of a bummer because it's yeah. probably never going to happen because of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. There was a talk about a reboot happening, yeah, but now they can't get the rights. It's because it's probably been it was so misconstrued with when they had the rights to it that they're probably like we don't trust you anymore, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like it's just like yeah, it's this prime candidate for because it'd be cool. Like a mini series of this, where you Hell can really yeah, get into the lore and the like. Do like a like a, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this, but like a Witcher. I don't know what season. Why would you get in trouble for that? Uh, people are getting all fucking weird about season two. Oh, I still need to watch season one. So, which I don't care. I don't. I, Henry Cavill's hot, and I like to watch him <laughs> hunt down monsters. <laughs> like, are people I, getting weird because it's like not following the source material as much anymore? That's what um, someone we know was saying. Well, I mean, I mean, it, it, as uh, as a as a big fan of the Marvel universe. <laughs> it's like oh, let it the fuck go. They're making their own shit, okay. And as a big fan of Witcher series, uh, all of, all of, all forms of the media, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't care. Like, yeah, do whatever you want. No, exactly. Let them fucking make their yeah. own story. I don't care. I just literally, I want to see the hot guy with the sword kill monsters. I don't yeah. care. What, I don't care how you do it. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I want to see Superman hunt down monsters. Okay, <laughs> leave me alone. Uh, do you want to do a quick, just a quick rundown on this movie? And it looks like they're gonna have vampires in it. Oh, that's cool. And the vampires are cool in Witcher. Because there's like a bunch of different types. There's like the human-esque ones, but then there's like monster ones. You know what I'm saying? Like Marcus Underworld kind of vampires. Cool. Do you want to talk about Neverending Story now? <laughs> no, fuck it. We're going to talk about Witcher. <laughs> Change and, <it>. and review <laughs> of season two. <laughs> Hopes and dreams of season two of Witcher. Um, yeah. I mean, this movie, it, it's pretty quick, straight, run, run and dry. How it like... It, I feel like... Uh, what how, I wrote it down pretty pretty easily like uh bastion likes books mom dead struggle school getting bullied introduction and then like inciting actions like he finds a bookstore with magic book with american sean connery 
<laughs> then, then the book owner kind of for a split, uh, yeah, like when yeah. you first see him, you're like, oh, he kind of looks like Sean Connery <laughs> for a minute. Oh, that, also, that guy, he's like, at first, he's like, I don't like kids. Get out of there. The kid's like, I like books. He's like, oh, I'll be your friend. <laughs> he likes books. Uh, his love for books outweighs his hate for kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I like how he's like, I, I did like that whole thing where he's talking with Bastion. It's like, you know, when you read the book, like, isn't it, you're like, you, oh, be, the whole you become Robinson Crusoe, you become uh, um, Nemo, Nemo and, and all that stuff. And he's like, this book is different with that. And, uh, you know, he like, is, it's like he hides it underneath like a newspaper and then the, Bastion takes it and he just turns around and like, weird smile like hmm yes my plan is coming into fruition <laughs> i really remember him going into fantasia is that the second one that's the second one that is the second one that's so maybe second maybe one. i've seen the second one more i that mean that i the second one was on tv a lot oh. when i was a kid yeah i was like when is he gonna go to fantasia and then he never did nope never like, yeah not in this one weird um so then yeah he gets the book and then he runs away to school and he gets introduced to Fantasia and the main problem of the nothing taking over Fantasia. Excuse me. Um, and then Atreyu's Journey, Sad Swamp, Morla, Falcor, Sphinx with boobs, Gamork, Tower, <laughs> Childlike Empress. The Ivory Tower was cool. Ah, uh, yeah. And then Bastion accepts his destiny and doesn't let despair rule him anymore. That's, there we go. And gets a ride on a dragon. Beginning, middle, end. And then the dragon comes to the real world. And then just they, Somehow. and then they, you know, bully the bullies. And the father never once questions where his son is for 24 hours. <laughs> right. Or never see the father. I think him. that's something that's brought up in number two, if I remember correctly. Uh. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the story. But you, you want to get into more detail on that? I don't even know how. I mean, I, really, I don't know. I don't. There's, there's nothing really, abs- I don't know. There's not really to me a lot of substance to this movie. I don't even know where to start. You kind of just did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Atreyu's journey, you know, like through the, the swamps of sadness. Like, well, I guess like first, yeah. So first and foremost, there's this mal- malicious force called the nothing that is mm-hmm. literally making everything into nothing, which is also just a weird concept to wrap your head around. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty much just imagine it, it's, it's, it's strange. It's, like it turns it, into it, the void. Yeah, it's like it's like um, like um, like death coming. It's you know? like a disin- just, disintegrating force. Mm-hmm. Everything is just going to become. No- I, it's very fitting. The nothing. Yeah. The nothing is coming. Like that's actually that sounds terrifying. You know. Yeah. No. It, it, it is. No. But that's 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 kind of what I'm trying to say though, is that it's just hard. I think for uh, humans in general. I mean, obviously, I'm just speaking from my point of view, but mm-hmm. humans in general. It's like trying to um, rationalize what the idea of infinity is. What is infinity? Mm-hmm. In your head, try and picture infinity. To beyond. Thank you. <laughs> My name's Woody. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean? It's like in your like right now, everyone listening, think about it. Try and picture in your mind infinity. Anytime I do it, there is a limit. Like there's a point where it stops. I can't think of... And it's the same thing with nothing. I can't wrap my head around. And that's also kind of what, like, maybe like part of the dread that I wasn't feeling is I can't r- grasp w- this threat. It's a very um, German existentialist, like, the thought and theory. It's like very Carl Jungian. Yeah, Jungian, and I get all you know? that. But it's just, I had a hard time caring because I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe that's what the what werewolf was for, the Gamork. I mean, it, a it, tangible. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be the. T- it's supposed to. It's like I said. It's a servant to the nothingness. Yeah, you know, and it it's likes the Silver Surfer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, servant for the uh, for the darkness. Um, actually, uh, what's really cool is like when Bastion finally st- when Va- Bastion starts reading it, the introduction to Fantasia, like the world, is really cool. With like you have um the snail rider and um what was the the other the thing night hob the night hob thank you <laughs> just a weird name um and then i'm assuming it's like a uh, hobgoblin yeah um but at night. and they're kind of like camping and the rock biter shows up and like on a giant like fucking like troll like bike rolling like troll like, like a, steamroller almost yeah but what was it like more like a what is that called a little kid a trike yeah it's like a steamroller trike yeah yeah a little um, tricycle it's and cool. Like, 
there's like there's a lot of like physical comedy of them like avoiding like they're thinking they're gonna get run over, but then the rock biter is like, oh, I've come from the north where the nothing has taken everything. I'm and going, oh, I've come from the south where the nothing is. Yeah. Oh, and I came from the west. And, and we've been sent to, and they all been sent to go talk to the to the empress. They're like for, emissaries, for, right? Yeah. yeah. And the empress is there is supposed to help save everybody. You know, that's they're hoping. So when they get to the ivory tower, and uh, which was like to describe it, it was like. A glowing white t- ivory, white tower, but it was like three space needles combined that was surrounded by like a mountain. Yeah. And it was glowing and it was really, I saw that. I was like, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's a cool thing. And there's all of these people from across the world of Fantasia that are there hoping to speak with the Empress and want help from the Empress. But the Empress is dying because the nothing is taking over Fantasia. Pause real quick. Was it the big head ones that made you think of Del Toro? No. No, okay. So it, I saw the, there was, you saw the two big heads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what made No, me just think. like all of it made me think of Del Toro. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we find out that this nothing is somehow linked to the sickness that the Empress is dying from. Mm-hmm. So we need, a, we, need our, we need our warrior hero. Our hero, Atreyu, who is a kid. Becoming the ball. <laughs> That wasn't at all the note, but I couldn't remember. I just remember the song. Becoming the bull. Nope, that's not that's it. That's not it. I think I was thinking of a... Actually, I can hear it in my head, but I can't produce it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I haven't. I have to, when's the last time you listened to that song? A Trey You? Yeah. It's on my, like... On my, <laughs> I, I, it comes on occasionally. Um, but yeah, so there's also... There, hey, there's a, there's a screamo band <laughs> or metal band. Screamo metal from the early 2000s named Atreyu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... So yeah, Treyu is uh, asked they uh, to um, go and like find th- find uh, the 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 cure for the Empress. What Atreyu means fearless. Oh really? I was like, that's got to mean something. In what? In uh, Germanic? Uh, meaning of Atreyu. Atreyu means fearless from ancient Greek. Greek. Atreus okay. and Sanskrit. Atreyu possibly means great warrior. Which makes sense. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's so there is like a duality thing of like, obviously, like Bastion, when you're reading this book, it's imposed. It's kind of like it's giving you the journey that you need to, like, become a better person, I guess is a good way to put it, you know? Yeah. Um. So with Atreyu being a child hero and warrior, it's kind of this is Bastion. It's it's him projecting what he wants to be, you know? Yeah. But that's also like when he goes like why he fails with everything is because he feels like he isn't worthy like you know he's he's depressed because he's lost his mom he's getting bullied he can't you know he he feels ungrounded uncertain you know all i'm doing is like thinking of pitches for this mini series that we're gonna get del toro to do <laughs> <laughs> well i just think it's how cool it'd be like if the book changed like you're kind of describing like on who read it so boy a is reading it and reads it a certain way but then you have his like friend that has is a girl reads it and she's like, no, what are you talking about? It's and then every time you know it becomes an interpretation of mm-hmm. you. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, just, I mean, yeah, it's a magical book. That's what it would do. Yeah. That's cool, right? That, yeah. That's a cool concept. Yeah. Where, like she's like, what are you talking about? The character's name is blah blah blah. Yeah. And then he's like, no, it's not. It no. says it says you know their name is blah blah. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think that'd be kind of interesting. But yeah. Um. So Atreyu is uh, a window into another world. Atreyu is sent out to find the cure for this for the Empress and. He he's is, gotta find a turtle. He's got. He doesn't know it's a turtle yet. He's gotta find a big turtle. Um, he, he's going to the what the southern. He's got to go to the southern oracle first, and uh, no, he has to go to the turtle first, and then he goes to the southern oracle. No, that the turtle is the southern oracle. No, he's, she says that I have to. You have to go to the southern oracle. No, she says you got to go to the northern oracle, and that's ten thousand miles away. I don't know, bro. I don't know because he's going through this. Yeah, he's going through the swamp of sadness to find the, the southern turtle. oracle. Morlock. Well, he's trying to find Morlock, and he doesn't know what Morlock is. Essentially, Morlock. Morlock's supposed to give him the information, have the information, but you know, then the swamps of sadness swallow his goddamn horse. It's brutal. Which is also a representation of just like you know Bastion, you know, like losing. He just feels yeah. he feels like he's he's lost his uh, everything. His, his closest friend, you know, like he doesn't have anything there to actually like companion him with. Mm-hmm. And then Morlock, who's not helpful and allergic to youth. Like, you could break down each of these characters and have them be, like, and have it be a representation of something that Bastion is dealing with, Mm -hmm. you know? The Luck Dragon's a little bit harder, like, because it's, like, it's, like, his hope, you know? That's trying to carry him through. 
Yeah, I mean that's 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 not hard. You just you just did it again. You just keep doing it. I mean, yeah, it's the hope. It's the hope. <laughs> I just keep doing it. <laughs> Should I even be here? Right now? Um, no, I mean, hundred percent. It's a flying golden retriever dragon dog that yeah. literally rescues everybody and whisks them away from danger. It's mm-hmm. the hope. <laughs> like, yeah. He's the luck, the luck dragon. Yeah, he's called the uh, fucking luck dragon. <laughs> which, which, yeah, because because uh, he say he just Deus Ex Machina randomly just saves Atreyu who's sinking into the swamps of sadness because he's sad oh yeah like yeah so the swamp of sadness eat you if you're sad yeah <laughs> you sink in sadness <laughs> what a fucking metaphor for depression dude you wallow in... <laughs> a man has a drink and the drink has you um um so like after after all of that it was say a morlock tells him that he's got to go to the northern oracle which is 10,000 miles away and that's what Atreyu's like it's too far i'll never make it and then uh, the turtle was annoying as fuck. Uh, Falcor, yeah, the turtle was annoying. Falcor, yeah, saves him, and then he just wakes up, and he's at, he's close to like the northern, uh, the uh, northern oracle now. But there's like this scientist, and he's like little miniature people <laughs> or things. If you want, they're like, kind of they're a, like pygmies. If I you, guess. I don't know. If you want kind of a clear indication of what they're like, they're like a uh, Billy Crystal and uh, yes. Um, uh, oh. Uh, uh, Oh, I forget. I forget her her the actress's name, but she's she was in a Scrooged. Yeah, oh God, what is her name? Um, fuck. But yeah, the the old the, they're the couple in Princess Bride. Yeah, they're that's they're very much the the old kind of bickering. Liar, 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 liar. Get he get said my, true love. Get out of my face, witch. <laughs> I'm not a witch, and after what you said, I don't even want to be your wife anymore. <laughs> They're, I forgot they were really great. No, that's man. great. That's a great scene. That's a really good scene. <clears throat> um, so to blave, to blave is to bluff. <laughs> and so uh, th- this like old scientist dude tells Atreyu that you know to get to the uh, Northern Oracle, you have to pass the the gate of the Sphinx, and no one has ever been able to do it because you have to believe in yourself to get past the Sphinx with boobs. Those are big boobs on the Sphinx, dude. <laughs> the writer, the author really hated that, too. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I think that's what it was. I, it goes into that review. It really beats it over your head. Like, to pass the Sphinx, you must believe. Like, mm-hmm. get... Oh, that's one of those get fucks. <laughs> you have to believe. Believe, Charlie. Believe. What the hell is that? <laughs> Charlie the Unicorn. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> kind of a deep... That's God a, damn. Oh, they took my kidney again. That's a deep cut. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Um, so they watch somebody get fucking fried. Well, that's the thing too. Yeah. This thing like just cooks you like these energy beams, just like their eyes open and a Treyu is about to get zapped, but jumps out of the way. That's what I was like. Okay. Just run through it then. Yeah, exactly. It's that easy to dodge. Like why weren't you just running through anyway? The guy, the guy that got zapped was on a horse. (laughs) Yeah. He stopped. (laughs) Um, and then he gets to the, uh, then what there's the second gate, which is, the mirror the mirror which is a reflection of bastion and uh, bastion seeing like reading like bastion keeps reading as he's reading this there's like little hints that he like he's in this story like him reading this is actually in it he's like um like to the perspective of someone in fantasia he's almost like an omniscient being yeah like what they'll hear him yell occasionally and he's outside the boundaries of fantasia yeah like the book is literally just like a a window into this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And literally a tray who just like, hit, just that was lo- weird. Looks at it and like, Oh, I guess I'll just walk through this. Now. After the big fucking deal about yeah. most men to see the true selves run away in fear. Yeah. Like I was like, Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Like an evil, a attacking attack yeah, right? or something. And then he just, no, nope. Kind of, he sees he, it's it's the reflection of Bastion, but like that's the true test of courage is does Bastion have the courage to keep reading after it's been revealed that he sees himself, type thing. Yeah, yeah, does that I, make, yeah. yeah that make, I guess I don't know. This this whole movie is a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> but then once Bastion, you know, once Atreyu gets in there, now he's at the Sphinx again, but they're blue. Oh yeah, and they're the Southern Oracle. Um, but then they give him, the, they tell him what the truth is. Like he, like the Empress needs to be, needs to be given a new name for Fantasia to what, survive. What was her name? Because when he yells it, they don't, they don't, it, they okay. don't give it to it you. It just says screaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's up for your interpretation. Oh. It's up for your, like it's so it's, you're part of the story as well. 
And then like, and also you don't even know what her original name was before. She's just known as the childlike empress. Yeah. So it, it kind of makes it a, a strange meta thing for us as a viewer as well, hmm. which I respect for the eighties actually. Interesting. Um, and, uh, so like the, as the Oracle's like falling apart for whatever reason, Atreyu now has to like go and <clears throat> try and uh, try and he, oh yeah they they tell like uh the human the human child must give her the name so again it's like saying like it's leading that Bastion has the power here it's up to Bastion to save these people yeah and he fucking fails <laughs> that nothing wins the nothing takes everything except for the ivory tower apparently you know what I was you know what this actually made me think of what? as like the nothing is just coming as a battle royale like Fortnite as the walls just kind of come around oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, he on Falcor like so he sees the rock biter and the fucking depressing rock biter's like I lost my friends. I thought these hands were strong, but they are weak. When the nothing comes, I will let it take me too. Like all right, bud. Gah. Happy su- happy 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 death. <laughs> um, good save. Thank <laughs> you. Um, good catch. Uh. Yeah, and like, and Atreyu was like, "What are what was that place that he was at? That like he sees his journey painted on the walls." I don't know. I don't <laughs> and know. then that's the Kimork. All right, let's just get to the childlike empress then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because then it turns what into like this. Like apparently, the childlike empress knew the entire time, and but Atreyu needed to go through the journey for Bastion to realize it. Otherwise, Bastion wouldn't believe that it was him who has the power to save. Fantasia and this world that that he's more or less created it through the book for the book for his self and then you know he screams his, oh he also does say it at some point when the when he's like, like oh she just needs a new name oh I wish she I wish I could give her a name I name her for my mom my mom had a beautiful name it's like oh well that's very much uh, yeah well I guess we know what's gonna happen here <laughs> um but I don't know. That's why it's like it's very much a kids movie. I feel very much more like a kids movie. Yeah, like a lot of the things are being spoon fed because a kid watching it would be like, "Yeah, that would be that's a good idea." I you know, I think that's kind of maybe why too. It's like a, what the whole like fantasy nowadays caters to both. Yeah, very much to both the adults that have to sit through it. Mm-hmm. They want also to be intrigued, at least uh, moderately entertained. Yeah, unless it's a like kids kids movie. Yeah, unless it's Rolla Polioli. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Um, so finally, like the childlike empress literally just like starts speaking to Bastion, like through the book. And then there's the last, the last grain of sand of Fantasia after he goes and like screams his mom's name out the window yeah. <laughs> in a very dramatic way. Um, and then he's faced with her in a nothingness and she's like, it's up to you. You just have to wish and like pretty much your imagination will save Fantasia. Yeah. Just just never stop imagining. Never stop being creative. Never just never stop stopping. Never stop stopping. Um and his it's like is there anything you wish now and he's like, "Oh, I can think of something." <laughs> oh. And then yeah. he, that's when he starts riding around on Falcor. And then the really weird ending of him chasing the bullies into the dumpster that they threw him in at the beginning. Yeah. And then the narration of and no, ba- and then Bastion had the never-ending story, or whatever it says. Oh no, it's and then it's, no, but that's a story for another oh, time. Yeah. And that's a story for another time. All right. Oh, that was it. Um, what are what are you are really disinterested with this movie, man? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, do you think? I mean, it's it's about like. Um, I wouldn't say it's like any like gremlin or like it's a wet mogwai. Yeah, I'd say, and I only give it that. Like, I want to give it a gremlin that's eaten after midnight because it's. I thought it was pretty bad, but I give it a wet mogwai because one, it spawned a whole franchise. Whether or not you mm-hmm. think those movies are good or not, it spawned a franchise. And secondly, it is iconic and important to fantasy movies today. Yes, it has its it has its its place in history. For yeah. like what it's like, it inspired it's it inspired entire generation. Of it's it's an, it's important. Yeah, it's important. You mm-hmm. know, like, and it is a very like in, you know like it is a strangely beautiful movie in like an artistic way. Yeah, and then it, it is it is a uh, fun to 
like it's visually stimulating. Visually, visually, it is stimulating. especially for the eighties, and it's it felt very fucking eighties too. Yeah, it's like if you really want to like get like a, a weird like flashback like time travel, this movie will make you feel like that like you're in the eighties. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a wet model. I agree with you. Yeah, like it's. I now because I want to watch the second one now. Same. I'm curious. It definitely I, <clears throat> it has a very low IMDb rating. Well, it's like five something. Yeah. But I also kind of want to rewatch the third one and just see Jack Black. Yeah, yeah, okay, with his like, like is he like isn't he like an emo bully? Kind yeah, of guy? yeah. He's got that like classic like uh, leather jacket flannel like yeah, coming yeah. out of the bottom. You know, yeah. <laughs> Long hair. I'm pretty sure. I have this <clears throat> image of it like being like pointed. Like, like gelled. Yeah. That's it. And it's like black. It's like black hair. <laughs> All right. Um, so next week we're going to be talking about uh, Legend. Yeah. That's what we're recording next. <laughs> legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, so, and we'll, uh, well, yeah, we'll see how, we'll see how that stands up the test of time. St- the t- t- sands of time. Birds well, of let's Persia. do a quick little predict- prediction. Since we haven't watched it in a long time, what do you think? I think it's going to be kind of like what this was. Do you think it's going to be like a wet Mogwai? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with it's going to be a Mogwai. From what I can remember, there's a, a lot of like very unneeded, like kind of like this one, very unneeded like transition scenes and like like narration, a lot of very forced narrative being put on you. Oh, um, maybe you're right. Also, because Tom Cruise is terrible in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember correctly. Uh, the, the, the saving grace of that entire movie is Tim Curry. Yeah. As Darkness. Darkness. The big horned guy. Isn't that what he's called? The Darkness? I don't know. I, I know him as the big horned guy. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe. So, yeah. Official rating for <clears throat> Never Ending Story is a wet mogwai. Yeah. Shorter episode this week for you guys. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. It's a shorter movie, so. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, we will talk to you next week about Legend. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. This is Tommy. This is Jay. Th- this tape has been mixed. This tape has been mixed. <laughs> Trying a new one. Yeah. All right. Okay, Later, guys. Bye. <laughs>